the Plymouth Colony Saga told by the women who lived it, by the Central Texas Mayflower Colony of the Texas Society of Mayflower Descendants. Videos in the series include the wives of colony leaders, Alice Carpenter Southworth Bradford, wife of Edward Southworth and Governor William Bradford, Susanna Jackson White Winslow, wife of William White and Edward Winslow in two parts, and Mary Brewster, wife of William Brewster. Wives of prominent couples, Elizabeth Tilly Howland, wife of John Howland, Priscilla Mullen Alden, wife of John Alden, Sarah Warren Cook, wife of John Cook, and Elizabeth Fisher Hopkins, wife of Stephen Hopkins. Introducing Sarah Warren Cook, presented by Susan Goldsworthy, descendant of Pilgrim Thomas Rogers. Good morning. My name is Sarah Warren Cook. My father, Richard Warren, and my husband, John Cook, together with his father, Francis Cook, came to Plymouth Colony on the ship, the Mayflower, in 1620. My father was a merchant adventurer, hoping to make a life in a new world. He sadly only lived a few years after arriving in Plymouth. My mother, Elizabeth Warren, however, lived another 45 years, dying at Plymouth in 1673. My four sisters and I arrived with our mother on the ship, the Anne, in 1623, and my two brothers were born later in Plymouth. When my father died, my mother was executor of my father's estate. She acted as head of household until we were all grown by paying the taxes owed by a head of household and then became an independent agent in her own right. When she died, she had one of the largest land holdings in the colony. This new life for my mother came about when my father, Richard Warren, agreed to be an undertaker for the reorganized loan that in 1626 members of the colony assumed with some of the former merchant adventurers in England to pay for the Mayflower voyage. My father, however, died before the agreement was complete. The colony needed the additional undertaker to complete the agreement. So as my father's widow, mother was allowed to fulfill a role previously only available to men. Her name, Elizabeth Warren, widow was recorded as one of the undertakers committed to paying off the colony's debt. She was also later permitted by an arbitration board to deed some land to her sons-in-law as well as her sons rather than following the tradition of only the sons inheriting all the land. I watched her and realized that in this new, world, new land a diligent and dutiful woman could also gain rights and responsibilities not available to us in England. My father-in-law, Francis Cook, also taught me much about the virtue of duty. He was instrumental in laying the practical foundation of Plymouth Colony. He acted as surveyor for the colony. Over many years, he rose every morning, regardless of the weather, put on dry socks and heavy shoes, and walked in muddy fields, meticulously laying out the roads and platting the lots of the colony so that no question of fairness in land allocation arose. My mother-in-law, Hester Mayhew Cook, was a French Puritan and the only French person in the colony. She arrived in Plymouth with the rest of the children on the Anne in 1623. She and my father-in-law, who was an Englishman, had both belonged to the French Walloon Church 
in Leiden, Holland, before the English separatists arrived. My husband, John, was baptized in this church in 1607. They were all dedicated Puritans. My husband, John Cook, was a good man and a godly man. We were married in Plymouth on March 28, 1634, and lived there for 28 years. During this time, our five daughters were born and grew up. Our two oldest daughters, Sarah and Elizabeth, were married in Plymouth in 1652 and 1661. My John was highly regarded and represented Plymouth to the colony court. He was made a deacon of the Plymouth Church and impressed all with his sincerity of purpose. When, however, his study and prayers led him to embrace the new Baptist and Quaker teachings, he was excommunicated, cast out of the Plymouth Church. This helped influence our decision to join the 36 people who purchased the Dartmouth Territory in 1652. We thought and prayed about it for a long time. In 1662, with sad hearts, to be leaving friends but looking forward, we left Plymouth and moved to Dartmouth with our three youngest daughters. We were also joined in the move by our oldest daughter, Sarah's growing family, and by other families. There we built a new house and immediately became active in our new community. John was known as an upright man and a village leader in Dartmouth and was soon authorized to perform legal duties such as solemnizing marriages. He was appointed 12 times as the Dartmouth representative to the court of Plymouth. John continued actively exploring the faith in God which led him to join the Baptist Church. He became the first Baptist minister in Dartmouth and also organized a more extensive Baptist society in 1680. In 1691, King William and Mary of England issued a new charter that combined Plymouth and its surrounding settlements with the main colonies and with the Massachusetts Bay Colony. In June of 1692, the last meeting of the Plymouth General Court was held. My dear John died in 1695. He was the last of the male Mayflower pilgrims to die. With him, a generation ended and a new generation looked forward. Sarah Warren Cook reenactor, Susan Goldsworthy. Technical production, Ann Bell. Background music, Betty Prince.